pick here. We have uh, our next month's deck box review. Remember last uh, time we reviewed this, it was quite poor, and I was very unimpressed. Um, I talked to the people running it. They said they were going to hire better staff at deck building, and we're going to give this another go. Um, we're going to see what they have us provided with. We have three Balfours in the car, which is fine. Um, you know, if the Gatewatch just released, these are still relevant packs. That wasn't my concern with last time. Um, it looks like we have a play mat. It looks like we have a play mat with their name on it, and it's giant. It's huge. The next box club, and you know what? I don't actually think that um, play mats are a bad idea. Uh, I think this is actually a really solid idea, um, especially for newer players. I think this is a big gain to have something to actually like play your decks on. You know, obviously, I don't like the design as much because it's it's just an endorsement, which is fine. Um, especially if this turns out to be a better program as we keep going forward, and only that first one had sort of a, a lapse. All right, we've got a new deck box, and it has one of the new generals on it um, from the new sets. Oh, there's the cards in there. We'll wait on that which is cool and we've got some sleeves uh, I guess these are three cases of 40 would be my guess which is nice they got Sarkon on it uh, Sarkon Vault it's a little bit hard to tell because the camera doesn't want to angle quite right for it and that's all nice but my real question was the quality of the deck again I'm not looking for a deck that's worth a lot of money. I am looking for a deck that's very synergistic. I would like to be able to give this to a new person and them to enjoy it. Okay. So the first thing I want to start off with is uh, Runic Thar Unbowed is a really... Let's see if I can get a good spot for you guys to see these. Bloop. Wow. Runic Thar is a really solid general. Like... This is the kind of general I actually like quite a bit. He's powerful, he's fun, he's flavorful, and you can build a deck around him very easily by not playing too many source or too many spells. Okay. Um Cedar Hedonist or Seder Hedonist is fine. Makes mana. Okay, Cole Stoker's fine, it makes mana. That landfall theme's okay. Okay, Silent Cyclops Triumph is not an okay card. Deathforge Shaman is not as bad. It's kind of playing with these um, mana-making creatures, of which we have one decent one. Uh, there's an ogre theme, so we can see like ogres and beasts and elementals, which is thematic, um, if nothing else. Feverant Carthar is not particularly great, but in one-on-one, -on -one, like, I could play it. I, I do like how it's a spell ability on a creature, I don't like how it's underpowered. Um, so, I don't actually mind Forge Devil as much. Like, it's not a card I'd normally run in ADH, but if you're playing against people, a lot of people run one toughness creatures that do matter. Um, Gang of Devils, again, spell effect without being a spell. Cyclops kind of theme. I'm not in on Goblin Brigade Balloon. This is. Not the kind of card I want to run, and it doesn't really do anything. Spell effects on creatures. Spell effects on creatures. Okay, spell effects on creatures. Um, okay, that's, that's fine. None of these cards are wowing me. I mean, it is a thematic deck. Uh, the theme's a little weak, but this is a market improvement over the last deck. This deck isn't making me, like, shake with anger. It's not great, but it is something I could give to someone who hasn't played EDH, and they could enjoy playing with it, which is what I was hoping for. I would hope that some of the decks are more powerful as we keep going through. Caustic Caterpillar, I think, is a really good include in the Rook Thar deck, by the way. Um, this is an effect that I am actively looking for, and uh, the fact that you can do it whenever you want it is nice. There are some other cards I would like with this effect as well. Um, I'm not as impressed with some of the smaller creatures. Okay, we have some new creatures. Going wide. Okay, Briar Palk Elf is a really nice card, especially in a deck like this. Um, cards like Battlefront Kershock are the kind of ways you can decide to go in different directions. I, I like that kind of feel and formidable. A lot more creature effects. Um, not okay with Archers of Carsey. That's not really a great card. 
Alpine Grizzly, maybe you could get away with. There we go. Survivalist, solid. Bowmaster is fine. Uh, the Snapjaw is fine. I I'm not sold on the Blister Pod. Okay, so we do have some spells. Um, I do like how the majority of these seem to be creatures. Because we have a grow uh, pump spell, pump spell, pump spell. So we've got three spells so far. We have a Queer on Elves, which is okay. Um, a Protect spell. I don't think that's worth playing. That's fine, but not great. That's fine, but not great. That's okay, but not great. That's fine, but not great. Uh, plummet. That's that's solid. Uh, that's okay. Fine, but not great. So we see a lot of like low impact um, pump spells. Root Wall is a solid creature. Um, Blight Widow is a little bit of an odd of an include because it's such a defensive creature. Because you're not only going with infect. Uh, you could pump it, but there's not really enough ways to pump it to make it great here. Um, Circle of Elders is fine. I, I do like Formidable as an ability, specifically, in a deck like this. I like Evolve as well with the amount of creatures we have. Uh, okay. Gate Vine Creeper. Well, I guess it can get a basic land. It would be nice if they included the Green Red Gate here. Um, a couple of Spiders and Spirits. The Disciples, okay, but not great. Snowboard Alpha is fine. I, I like that. Um, not much renown, so it's not great. Like, do we have any non-basic lands? I'm really hoping we have just a couple. A couple non-basic lands? We don't. I think a Guild Gate or a Bounce Land or any of the two colored lands go a long way to kind of making these decks more fun and have more useful cards. Um, I'm going to set aside all the cards that I think are unsatisfactory, either from a thematic and or power level. Okay, so we have a lot... We don't have a lot. We have a small smattering of uh, cards like this. I would like some sort of direct damage since we are in red. You know, Volcanic Hammer or something like that. But things that... Well, most of these look okay. I don't know. Scare, snare the Skies I'm probably out on. But I actually think... And, and Serpent's Gift I'm out on. I think the rest of these are acceptable pump spells thematically and power level wise. There's really only two cards I'm super unhappy with. Um, I don't mind the renowned creatures in here. It's hard to do renown and just just green with just these couple cards, but they're not embarrassingly bad. Um, I don't mind a little bit of reach. I do wish we had some way to pump up these creatures. There's a lot of green creatures that are not particularly expensive that that could go a long way to making these creatures better. Um. I wish Gate Creeper Vine had the gate to get, so it could get two colors of mana, but I don't mind it as a creature in here. Uh, like Crocker. No. Blight Widow is a weird inclusion, but powerful. Um, I don't think Blister Pod is a card that you consider playable. Uh, even though it has a cool effect, it's just not there. Carsey Arch Archers of Carsey might be the worst card represented. Um, I like how there's a lot of bodies in other ones. Brush Strider, like. Having one toughness and no effect is just not acceptable in uh, this type of play. I like Deadly Recluse. I like the Bailoth. We've got a couple of multicolor cards, which I appreciate them just putting in a couple, even if they're not particularly great multicolor cards. They give a feel for that. Um, the Brigade. Okay. This is such a big improvement over the last time. Last time... I would say the amount of cards that were either on theme or playable, it was like seven or something. And this time we have less unplayable cards than total playable cards last time. These six cards, I am not happiness, happy with, and I would not be happy giving to someone else. Blister Pod, maybe if you had some sort of sacrifice theme that's not in this deck, but these other five cards are just not cards you can play. These are just bad, bad, bad filler cards. Um, so maybe a little bit more looking and finding out which of those cards don't belong in, but... I would definitely say the rest of these cards hold up. That I could give this deck to, you know, my cousin who just started Magic and, and they're really excited about an EDH deck. I could be like, oh, well, here's this cool Runic Thar deck of mine. Um, or I could gift it to them and they could have, you know, a deck box and all this kind of cool stuff. And between the packs and um, the deck box and the playmat, you're probably getting close to your $30. Um, and, and it is a cool gift set up for that. I would appreciate if they had a couple more build around uncommons. Uncommons that were cooler 
uh, maybe, or, or like junk rare cards, like a 25 cent rare, like aestheticism or something, that's really going to push this deck to having uh, cool themes for people to build on. Like right now, I, I don't see, there's a theme to Runic Thar, but there's not a theme in these cards that you as a new de deck builder could um, aspire to. You couldn't push it in a certain direction. Let's make sure I'm not lying. I mean, like, there's the two renowned cards, but I don't think those are enough, and there's not enough renowned cards to build a renowned EDH deck. But maybe, like, more cool Sumbo Ward Alpha cards. Like, this is the kind of card, I think this is one of the coolest cards in the deck because it plays so well in it. Um, but maybe a way to pump up these cards, like more evolved kind of things, more things that maybe care about counters. Maybe an enchantment um, that moves counters or adds counters or removes counters. There's a lot of those cards um, in green that do interesting things there. Going with the Evolve and Mega Morph themes, you know, just a little bit more to put me in a position to be really happy. Maybe a couple more formidable cards, and I'm fin you know, a lot of these cards don't have um, a significant amount of monetary value, and you just basically need to keep your uh, price point of the deck somewhere where, where you're still, you know, they deserve to be able to pay for their employees and all that kind of stuff, but a, a lot of these things depend on economies of scale. If you're not making a lot off of each person, you're making more off of uh, the whole, you know. If you're making three dollars off of each subscription person that subscribes to your uh, your box, your monthly box, and you have a thousand people, then you're three thousand dollars. And that's kind of, I'd say a little bit more value, but it, it smart value. I don't want them to include like, you know, a shock land in here. I don't want all my value tied up in one land. I really want to see cool uncommons, things like Sombra Word Alpha. Let's just go back to that because I think this is the most interesting card in this one. And I know it doesn't seem like a particularly interesting card at first blush, but with really good creatures following with Runic Thought in that, you can really get into that position. So I'm still not at the point where I'm going to recommend this, um, this box, because this box wasn't spectacular and it wasn't as interesting as I'd like, but it's it's acceptable for what we're getting. I don't think that this is something where I'm just vehemently unhappy with it. I could give this set of cards to a new Magic player. They would find it flavorful. They would find it interesting. If we just add a little bit more depth in some really key uncommons and cheap rares, I think we'd really be somewhere with this deck. So, um, marked improvement. Still not 100%, um, you know, on recommending this to other people. We will be opening the packs and some other gate watch later. Um, but we're about to start our draft for the new set coming out because we've got Mirrodin Darksteel and uh, Mirrodin Darksteel Fifth Dawn which will be an interesting format and I'm about to talk about that in a second. Let's just go over this one more time what I got. I got a deck box and that's about 10-ish dollars. We got three packs which is about 12-ish dollars. Um, I got a set of cool commander sleeves which is uh, depending where you're at between 8 and 12-ish dollars and I got that big giant Playmat that says their name on it, the deck box. Ah, uh, let's just crumble it down here. The deck box, which is probably, you know, $5. So, you know, I got more than $30 of value out of this, and I got a deck that is acceptable. So, definitely getting there. Um, good jobs to the deck box on making that improvement, and we'll be right back with the draft today, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> 